Hello everyone, back to shooting into today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for next week, 10 days. Well, today's second video, day 10, will take us to the 23rd of February. And uh, we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles. They run around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFSV2 at the end of the video the next four weeks. That gets us well into the early part of March. I should get on with that for you in a moment. Just say that first video today was 6 a.m. upload. And we could be live streaming from 8 p.m. this evening. We'll have our Monday night live stream uh, where we will be uh, doing our Sobel's watch. And we'll show you a little bit of long range in that as well. So, uh, live stream coming at 8. I'll see you live um, for that one. But uh, let's get on with 10 to 14 there. We're going to begin having a look at uh, stratospheric developments. Of course we are. We've got to. Uh, so temperature at 10 HPA over the uh, North Pole from the JMA. The black line here shows that we're currently ticking down ever so slightly with the temperature there. This will, I promise I've been saying it, you're probably wondering what's going to happen, but this will be lifting up quite significantly in the next couple of days. Going low down to 30 HPA. Uh, their warming has leveled off at uh, that level. Latest two GFS runs look like this. This is a midnight GFS. So the sudden stratospheric warming is getting underway now over Siberia with those orange and red colours. And uh, that sudden stratospheric warming penetrates into the uh, North Pole itself in a rounded couple of days' time, lifting the temperature probably up to around minus 12, something like that. Should send the zone wind into reverse as well by around Thursday. Um, and displacing the polar vortex at its roots here from uh, the uh, edge of the pole down in towards mid latitudes in towards uh, North America, the Atlantic, and into Europe as well. Into the extended range of GFS midnight run, another warming tries to get going there over. Uh, Siberia, not reaching the same level as the first warming, but nevertheless quite significant warming continuing. That total as we get to the end of GFS speed like right now. Have we got a split of the PV there? Let me know what you think in the comments. Have we got just here? Just there. What we call that a split of the PV? It looks a little bit like it, doesn't it? Um, I've seen better splits, but that does look a little bit like a split of the polar vortex there to me on the uh, GFS midnight run with the two lobes of blue, you know, going off into different directions. Let me know in the comments whether you think that's split or not. Let's have a GFS 6 Z uh, is looking. Again, uh, sudden stress threat warming occurring over the uh, next couple of days. Um, moving on into the extended. That's how we look. So that secondary warming tries to get a base over Siberia, but it doesn't quite reach the same level as the first warming. Um, and that's how we get to the end of the GFS 6Z. So, you know, still the polar vortex to some degree is there uh, around Greenland and whatnot on uh, the GFS 6Z. No split of PV uh, with the GFS 6Z um, on that one. Zone winds are going to reverse. This is from uh, weatheriscool.com. So uh, the zone wind is continuing to weaken today. We'll be going into reverse by about Thursday. All GFS on some ever sending zone winds into reverse and then possibly uh, reverse them again after a little bit of a, a pushback. Possibly reverse them again towards the end of the month. ECM data looks like this. So the ECM uh, from uh, data from the University of Berlin. Based on last night's 12s, then show that the zone wind is going to reverse at 10 HPA over North Pole on Thursday, that's 16th of, uh, of uh, February, going down to minus 3.2 ms. And uh, even by day 10, which is 240 hours, 22nd of February, of course, this is generated last night, on last night's, um, this is generated from last night's E7 12s, everyone. Um, even then, the zone wind still in reverse at minus 0.2. However, the one issue we have got is at 30 HPA. I talked about this yesterday. There is no sign of a reversal of zone winds at 30 HPA up to 240 hours. The zone wind will weaken at 30 HPA. That's closer to troposphere, of course, but staying just about positive at plus 2.9 ms uh, up to day 10. So a weakening of zone winds at 30 HPA, but no reversal. And this tells us that possibly 
um, the tropospheric response then uh, to the stratospheric warming are going to be somewhat limited. But we should wait and see. I'm going to keep monitoring. We will have a zone of wind at 10 HP into reverse by Thursday. Sexual temperature is currently sitting at 5.4, which is 1.6 degrees above average at the visual to the 12th of February to yesterday. These were GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. For the next couple of weeks on London today, red line, third year upper air temperature average on London starting off significantly above average at the moment and staying so in towards the final week of the month. There is a cooling trend into the last week of uh, February. A lot of scatter within that. We've got cold ensemble members down here, mild ensemble members up there. So again, it remains the case that around 23rd, 24th of February onwards, lots of uncertainty, but before then, solidly uh, mild. Precipitation wise, there'll be lots of dry weather as well over the next week, 10 days. So we'll be having wet weather around the 17th of February again. Some around the 20th, but overall the next week, 10 days, looking pretty mild. Into the closing days of the month, then it is getting rather more unsettled. Temperature anomalies on the 13th, 21st of February are milder than average. Precipitation anomalies from the 13th, 21st of February, drier than normal, especially so in the south. Places we've a map from EarthNoldSchool.net shows that we're drawing in southerly winds uh, today. And uh, we've lost the southwest to determine the south. It's a drier air from off the continent. And so that is why we are successfully today breaking up a lot of the cloud that we're under over the weekend and getting good sunny spells. But watch out for fog patches tonight. Right, this is our latest UK that you're around. It's looking for midnight on Thursday. A trough of low pressure coming in off the Atlantic, bringing some shared rain. It's rather wet and windy there. Big night on Friday. Might, maybe some gales up in the north. And then into the weekend. High pressure sits to the south, low pressure to the north, and we, re we remain mild with winds in from the west and from the southwest. ICOM, again, looks rather unsettled around Thursday and Friday with that area of low pressure, particularly so up in the north. Um, another low pushes through over the weekend, actually, with the uh, with ICOM, so uh, that brings perhaps more show rain, especially in the north, uh, from Saturday into Sunday. And then high pressure back in uh, into the air pub next week. That's a colder ridge. Probably will bring a return of overnight frost and fog. GFS midnight run showing uh, low pressure bringing unsettled weather on Thursday and Friday. We will probably get our first rain of the month down in the south on Thursday. And then after that, high pressure sitting close to the country really as we go through the weekend and into next week. Always more unsettled in the north, always dry in the south and still looking quite mild. The extended GFS midnight run turns very unsettled with low pressure coming in off the Atlantic bringing plenty of wind and rain through the final days of February. GFS 6Z once more looks rather showery on Thursday to Friday and windy in the north. Could this be a name storm? I'm not sure it quite reach that level but certainly looks like it brings some gale force winds to the north Thursday to Friday. More uh, rain from the north on Saturday, mostly dry though down in the south, and high pressure back in by the beginning of next week. That is a colder ridge, probably produces overnight frost and fog. And um, that ridge sits around the country then up to day 10. Now, yeah, it certainly rains with the GFS 6Z, unlike the midnight run, which turns unsettled with 6 z actually keeps high pressure dominating so it remains mostly dry probably with a continental flow we've got overnight frost and fog returning there and at the very end of the GFS 6 there we are trying to get that high pressure up to Scandinavia it's the 1st of March now um, and uh, you know we, we are a long way out 384 hours but it looks like we're trying to get that high pressure to Scandinavia and ridge it towards uh, the Siberian high there a big cold pool sitting across eastern parts of Europe. If you got the wind into the east, there's plenty of cold air to the east, you know, to, to drag in. So uh, that's quite an interesting end to the GFS 6 <coughs> Excuse me. A long way out, though, of course. If you enjoyed the video, please you like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing And uh, drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. Thank you so very much, everybody, for doing that. GM, once again, has high pressure. Dominated over to south at the end of the week, uh, but low pressure in the north with wet, windy weather up there. Into the early part of next week, high pressure's back in, keeping the dry and fine weather going. And that's how we look as we get to day 10. 
with the high pressure sitting just to our west and southwest. And then the uh, ECM looks like that. Once more, showing conditions pushing across the country as we go from um, uh, Thursday to Friday. Wet windy in the north, probably rain quite limited down in the south over the weekend into next week that high pressure starts to pull out to our north and west should try to pull something a little bit colder in from the east perhaps by the beginning of next week high pressure then back in a colder ridge though would deliver overnight frost and fog and by day 10 we have that high pressure sitting just out to our west bringing in a chilly northwesterly type flow not cold up to this point although it's turning cold across scandinavia with this drop of low pressure here but um we're on the edges of that but certainly a, a cooler look to the ecm run from around monday onwards from around there uh as the high pressure begins to reposition more towards the west and the northwest. This is the today's broadcast based on the ECF run from Tometio.com. Show rain spreading across the country um, through Wednesday and then looks quite wet actually on Thursday across England and Wales. That will be a turn up of a box which has been very dry across England and Wales up to now, but an area of wet weather pushed across England and Wales on Thursday. And they're into those showery conditions, really, um, as we go through to the end of week. Wet, windy in the north, mostly dry down in the south, until we get closer to around a week out, and then some of that wet weather is pushing down into the south. After that, we've got high pressure repositioning. The show's starting to turn more towards snow by the very end of the ECM run up in the north. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10. It gets us to the 23rd of February from the Icelandic Met Office. 29 members of the ECM ensembles, including control and the operation run, have that high pressure to our west, low pressures to the north. So we're mainly dry, but it's certainly cooler there. Uh, with the uh, wind direction coming in from the northwest. So we've got 13 with low pressure over to the east of the country. High pressure is out to the west. That is a significantly cooler scenario as well. Probably quite cold and unsettled with like a northwesterly to almost northerly flow. And then we've got nine with high pressure ridging in from the Atlantic and going up towards Scandinavia. Some sort of easterly could be possible there down in the south. This is very significantly different to the options that we have in the ECM ensembles yesterday, I have to say, telling us that there, there's uh, a lot of uncertainty, I think, as we're moving towards the final week of February. And then during time, these are the options that we've got. It gets 28th of February, 13 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure right in over top of the country, so I that's going to be mostly dry, probably quite spring-like by day, could be frost, frog, but frost and fog, not frog, frost and fog by night. Um, that's why I call it the gruesome twosome, because it's easier to get, <laughs> to get it out. Um, 12 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure ridging up from the south to the north. So, maybe mostly dry and probably quite spring like winds in from the southwest. There, we've got nine with low pressure to the east. That could be bringing down some sort of a northerly type flow. That's colder and more unsettled. Uh, another nine just here with high pressure just towards our northwest. It's going to be mostly dry, but probably bring in a chilly sort of northeasterly. And then eight with high pressure between Scandinavia and Greenland. Low pressure over France, and that would get the wind properly into the east. So that is probably the coldest of the options there. A range of options. So uh, we wait and see what happens in the last week of February. All will be revealed. We will be going through the GFS ensembles tonight to see what they're showing individually for the last week of February. I imagine there will be a lot of different options on the table, so uh, we'll cover those tonight in our live stream. CFSB25 leaving a 500 millibar high tides bring down into week period. It's the first week period, takes from the 13th to the 19th of February. The coming week will have high pressure to the east and low pressure to the west, so main dry and mild into week two. Because the 20th, 26th of February, again, high pressure is in control of the weather, so this very dry February will go on. Now, week three <laughs> sees a repositioning of the ridge north, so this is 27th of February to the 5th of March. High pressure then is pulling northwards to sit. Somewhere between Iceland and Norway, low pressure is moving down towards Spain and the Med. That should start to bring in colder easterly winds there as we go into the beginning of March. 
And week four, which is the 6th to the 12th of March, then send the high to Greenland. Wow, 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 wow. Uh, and with low pressure covering most of northern Western Europe, we're turning cold and wintry there. I think cold and wintry with the CFS into the second week of March. We're blocking centred right over Greenland and uh, low pressure covering most of uh, most of Europe. So uh, particularly the north and the west of Europe would be cold and potentially quite wintry. Goodness gracious me, what a turn up for the ball. Remember, it's four weeks out, though, so <laughs> that's uh, to be taken with a large pinch of salt. Right, okay, if you enjoyed the video, then please can you like, share, subscribe, please show the show what about, drop a comment, let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. We thank you so very much, everybody, for doing that. So, uh, just don't coming up tomorrow, we're going to have 6 a.m. upload. We'll have the extended uh, European outlook um, for uh, the for the next six weeks with the EC extended model. I'll have a 10 to 14 day as well for you tomorrow. So, plenty of content to come. We'll be live streaming uh, at 8 p.m. this evening. We'll be live streaming on Souls Watch. Obviously, we'll go through 12 then as well so uh, i shall see you a little bit later on for that but uh, for today 10th of 14 day video that's all for now and thanks for watching